Order of operations is very important. Like remembering to drill that hole before you part off the part. The eccentric casting is one of the most complex parts of this engine and it's very small and I don't have all the tools so we'll see how it goes. Uh, this needs to be drilled through in these two places uh, for drilled and threaded partially for the screws that will hold it together. Then it has to be cut in half to make this circular when it's clamped back together. Uh, there's an oil entry here, there's a screw uh, in here for the rod, and then this has to be turned round, and then there's a groove that has to go on the inside for the uh, eccentric uh, cam. And there is no tool in my possession for that, so I'll have to make one. So this is going to be fun. Starting with some general cleanup, just sanding off either side and filing off the various flash that's on the part to try and get it fairly even. This is my build diary for my Coke bottle steam engine, which is a PM Research number 5. This is a build diary, not a tutorial. Watch people who know what they're doing for tutorial advice. Learn from my mistakes. Here I'm verifying that the two sides are parallel to each other as I'll be using those to set it up vertically in the vise. And that will be my vertical reference for now. Centering with the wiggler uh, so we can locate on the part and drill the two holes for the two bolts. If you're enjoying this build diary, please like and subscribe and give me your feedback in the comments below. Here I'm spot facing the two places where the screw heads will go using a 1 8 end mill. Anytime I'm using these small end mills, I'm running the mill as fast as it will go, which is about 2900 RPM, which is about 20% 20, 20 faster than it says on the panel. I think because the panel was calibrated at 50 hertz and we're in America so we're at 60 hertz so everything goes faster. Center drill first and then follow up with the tapping drill size. plan says a clearance hole of 330 seconds. And I couldn't find a 330 second drill. That one seems to be missing from my drill index, so I'm using a, an end mill here, which works just fine for making clearance holes. Now it's flipped over and made vertical again by squaring against those edges, and we're finding the center again. And here we're just facing down these two bosses. The plan doesn't actually say how long they should be, but it does say how much longer the tall ones should be than the short ones. So I'm making the short one clean it up and then I'm bringing the other one down to the appropriate distance above it. Using probably a bigger end mill than I need to. And we start on the oil cup. So this hole goes through and then there's a larger diameter for uh, holding oil that goes down into the main bearing. So this goes down to the saw line, which we haven't cut yet. And then I come in with this drill to make the cup and it doesn't look like it's centering. And then I turn it on. And it's all over the place. I have a bent drill. So it wasn't in the drill index. This is probably why it wasn't in the drill index. So I found another one. It's about the same size. We just take this down a short distance to make space for holding some oil.
the hole in the top has to go to a set depth. You don't want it to go all the way through. Uh, so I'm having to set my zero here. As usual, I'm using a broken eighth inch end mill. And then I have a button on the MPG that uh, sets the 0.125 distance offset. So this gets drilled and tapped. I think it's for 348. So this is fairly small, not the smallest. There are some size one holes, uh, tapped holes on this machine. Th the threes are actually quite big. This is my new slitting saw. So th this came in the mail from China, I think. And slitting saws don't seem to mind if they have run out because they're just going to cut. They're just not going to cut all the way around. But this seemed a bit excessive to me. So after a bit of it chattering away like this, I put the dial gauge on it and um, persuaded it a little bit. And after being persuaded, it ran a bit more true. I'm not going to show that on camera because I did the persuading while it was in the mill, which is naughty. But this cuts through. So I'm going through on a center line, uh, which I marked up using the setup you saw earlier with the two, one, two, three blocks and the rule. Oh, and, and yeah, took a while to find that. And then this has to come down another one mil on either side. So there was about three, three mil, 125 to come out altogether. The saw took out a third of that, and then we take out a mil on either side of the part. Getting the sun in the window there. Then we have this flipped around. Now this had the two bosses for the screws already milled, uh, even to the same height. So I was able to use those to set this up horizontal in, in the in the vise to do this facing operation. And then it goes together. I'm leaving a little gap there so I can stick some of the super glue in because I know it sticks very well from a previous video. The idea being I really don't want this to move. In retrospect, probably shouldn't have done this because it does, did keep the two parts slightly apart from their final distance, which uh, leads to a lot of fettling later on. I'm putting it together on the one, two, three block so that it's nice and flat. And we get it in the four jaw chuck, face it down. It's got a, I want to take an even amount off both sides. Uh, so we face the one side half the amount that needs to come off. And then I did do some film. I thought I did some film of making the tool for this, but I can't find it. Uh, this is an old boring bar I have which has a little uh, eighth inch piece of high speed steel in it. I was able to grind that down. I tried to get it down to the width of the groove, but it ended up about 40,000 smaller after honing. Um, I don't have good uh, tools for grinding high speed steel. So that's something I need to add to my list of things to buy. And you can actually see the tool here because it's, it's on the left hand side, but there's really no way to get the camera in there. Uh, so here I'm using the same tool to do the boring as for the as to do the groove so that I know how deep it's going to be because otherwise I'd lose my setup and I'd have no accurate way of measuring it. So I do the bore first, uh, check it for size, 
and then go in and cut. Here's cutting the groove here. You can see it moved to the left there slightly. And then there was a bit of a burr, so I went back to the diameter and did another single pass at uh, the bore diameter just to take that burr off. And then I flipped it around, uh, trued it up with the dial gauge and facing it off. You can see it's wobbling a bit there. Uh, that's because it's on the other side. I didn't bother uh, centering it, I just got it flat. And we're going for a quarter inch and I happened to nail it uh, on the first try, which wasn't intentional. I thought I had another 10,000, so I got lucky. Exactly. This is the eccentric. Not me, this. I am not the eccentric. This is the eccentric. There's a groove on the inside. There's an oil hole. It goes through to the groove. And there's a threaded hole in the top for the piston rod. Valve rod for the valve rod. The kit came with a piece of three quarter inch steel for making this next part. Um, I didn't get those materials from the kit, so I'm actually using a piece of seven eighth here because the dimensions of the part, it has two diameters which are offset from one another. And if I used three quarter stock like they would have supplied, both of those centers would have been off center from the stock. So. Uh, no, uh, I had a piece of 7 8 which is already cut to length. So I'm using that and that way I can do one of them on center and then just one of the other one will be off center. So the initial two passes was just to set my DRO and face the end. And now I'm bringing down to the major diameter of the sticky out bit that will go in the groove in the thing we just made uh, plus a thou. So this is going to come to 625 is what we're aiming for on this dimension. Nailed it. This is a two millimeter metric parting tool, um, but it'll do. It's close enough to what we need. And we're setting it here to the end of the part with the far side from us of the blade to the zero at the end of the part. And then bringing that into where the edge of our ridge is going to be and cutting into the smaller diameter, leaving a ridge in the middle. And then I move it in two millimeters from zero and reset my zero and then go in so that the edge of the tool that's closest to the camera is now the cutting edge and I cut the other edge of the ridge with that. At this point, all the dimensions should be correct. So go at it with a file, clean off any burrs that I can find. I need better files. And hopefully it will fit. But of course, it doesn't want to go on. But this is a good kind of failure because you can always take metal off. You can't, it's much harder to put metal back on as you will see in an earlier video. So this took a lot of fettling because I didn't want to 
go too quickly. Trying different measurements, trying to figure out why was it measuring small enough but not going on and various things finally taking a little bit more metal off. Trying to keep both sides the same. And finally it started to, to go on. And then I realized the problem was that because of my high speed steel grinding not being good, the end of my cutting tool was slightly off square. So that was leaving me with not a completely cylindrical surface to work with. But a little bit of filing and fettling. And finally I went with uh, using the red ink uh, from a Sharpie to try and see where the final bits that were touching were so that I could clean those up. And yeah, you know, running on the lathe for a bit to try and wear it in. So this took a very long time. But it would go on, it would be stiff, it would be a little bit stiff, tighten it up, still stiff, but eventually it starts to free up. And here you can see to the left hand side it's rubbing on both of those flats and that's because my tool is slightly canted the other way. So a little bit of filing on those surfaces uh, very gently uh, brought it down to the point where it is spin freely. Now we offset it in the lathe and I had to really think about this because the two things are offset by a tenth of an inch, 100 thou, but that's a radius. So we have to make sure that we're offset in the fore jaw by twice that amount. So that's why we're truing up here. The two highs there were both uh, on zero, but two turns of the dial. So I started cutting it with the cutoff tool again, because we're going to be going behind the work we already did. So I can't really use the regular cutting tool. But it seemed a bit sketchy. So after a little bit, I did switch to the regular cutting tool at least to take off the majority of the stock until it gets down to where it might start cutting into the cam itself. It's very unnerving turning stuff on the lathe when it's not in the middle. It just doesn't feel right. But uh, it's very cool. And then I had to switch back to the cutoff tool to do the final dimension on the on the hub component of this part. And then as everything is finished, we can move towards doing the final cutoff of the part because there's nothing left to do except, of course, the hole in the middle where it mounts to the shaft. I really should have done that. That's about where I noticed that I didn't do that. So at this point, I'm several hours into this part and maybe I have to just start all over again. So I gave it a shot of trying to dial it in with the 
dial indicator to try and get it in the four jaw because uh, I do have surfaces I can work against to get it trued up and I got it within a thou so I went for it I didn't know if this was going to succeed but I got lucky and I was able to recover the part uh, and get that hole in place without it flying across the room or damaging itself too much. The last thing is to fit the grub screw, which is one of the tiny screws. Actually, no, this is another 348, but the grub screw itself is so small, I have trouble finding the tool for it. That's our parts. One, two, three. And they actually fit together. There's a little bit of stickiness in places, but that will wear in. It goes on the shaft. Sorry about the focus here. I should have set fixed focus, but oh well. It's pretty free. And that's how it acts. That is, of course, the timing is not correct there. That will come later. That's all for today. See you next time. Thanks for watching.